you doing? I'm Mike Caddy, and welcome to the Patterson Park Podcast. This week, this week we pause and we take a breath. This week, we find our stillness. This week, I sit down and I talk to one of my oldest friends, well, actually one of Matthew's oldest, oldest friends, he was best friends with her before I even met him, and that was 15 years ago. This week, we sit down and talk to yoga instructor Angela Schwartz. Angela just became a yoga instructor when COVID-19 hit. In fact, it was January, and she had just been put on the schedule at the local yoga studio where she was working. When COVID hit, she was immediately taken off the schedule because the yoga studio shut down. She didn't quite know what to do, but it only took her a few days to figure it out. What she did was remarkable. What she did was create and build her own community. Not just a local community, but a community of people who do yoga all over the world. A community of people who teach yoga all over the world. She brought them all together in what she called Day of International Yoga. We talk about that. And we talk about a lot more. We talk about finding your breath, about the forced pause that has resulted from COVID-19 and how that forced pause helps all of us to reset and regroup, or at least it can, if you follow and practice a little bit of yoga. I was a yoga skeptic. I'm a type A personality. I run all around the country doing this and that, and I seldom have time to well to breathe. But Angela convinced me and I'm going to give it a shot. So please join me. She can convince you to take a listen. You know, you have all over your website and and when we have talked, you talk about community, 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 community. And if you don't have a community, you're going to build a community. And so Tell me about that, because that's not most people's response when a pandemic hits is, oh, let me build a new community. Yeah, so I, my, you think about what you need, what a person needs, I have to have connection. And where do you get connection? In community. And so I have always been a person that needs to be a part of an authentic community, doing something good, bringing people together. That's just, it's how I'm made, right? It's, it's what I've always done. And so when the pandemic came, and so June, I'm not at a studio and, um, and I just created, I thought, what can I do to still bring people together? I had already been teaching on Zoom for a couple months. And so that's the community I'm assuming you're referring to as that DIY community that yes. I built right around. I thought, how can I, I knew I couldn't be stuck behind a screen with no interaction with people. I also knew I wasn't going anywhere. Right. So I had to start to invite people into uh, what used to be my dining room (laughs) (laughs) and is now a studio. And, and that's what I, so I created this community around me of yoga teachers that could bring yoga to people around the world. So yoga teachers from around the world, bringing yoga to people from around the world. So let's put this in perspective for just a minute. You were scheduled to teach you that yoga studio closed because of the pandemic. Literally within a day or two, you rolled out Meet Me On My Mat, which is meetmeonmymat.org, and I'll put it up there. And then not a long time after that, you decided to build and create a worldwide yoga community. So started internet, I'm going to mangle this because of my dyslexia, Day of International Yoga, D- uh, yoga. <laughs> Day of International Yoga, <laughs> not yoga, <laughs> yoga, <laughs> Day of International Yoga, DIY, and that exploded. It did. It did. There were people, um, I have some maps you can't see there, but I have some maps on my wall. And every time that we would have a new teacher that would join the community or a new student, I would circle this place on my mat, at map and we, we wound up going to just about every continent and most of the United States with either an instructor joining us 
to teach or, you know, them inviting or somebody seeing it on social media and joining in. And it was um, what we did is a full day and every hour on the hour, there would be a different yoga instructor with a different type of yoga instruction. So that I always, this is the thing I say, <laughs> yoga is for everybody, but I might not be the yoga instructor for you. So let me help you find the instructor for you. So, I, you know, that is not the business model that most people, <laughs> you know, have. I think it's brilliant, you know, but, but most people are like, kind of my way or the highway, right? There's enough for everybody of, of everything. There right. just is. And nobody is going to share yoga the way that I share yoga. And nobody is going to share it the way some other instructor shares it. And so the important thing to me is that people come together in community and that people make it to their mats or not on their mats. Toss the mat aside. I don't care. There's so much more to yoga than being on a mat, right? So I don't care how we do it. Let's just take a moment and be mindful. And I don't care how you get there. Okay, so you touched on it a little bit, but elaborate on your yoga philosophy and how 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 you approach yoga is different than, say, you know, the um, the typical uh, yoga instructor that you might come across, say, at the mall after the mall walk. <laughs> right, right, or like a like a gym yoga kind of exercise routine, like right. do yoga to lose weight or you know, whatever it is, um, they, the movements are one part of yoga. And I didn't know and understand that until I did yoga teacher training. And I had been going to yoga for a while and I didn't understand that. So you thought that the movement, the, the positions like upside down doggy or whatever, and I know I'm mangling that. I'm intentionally mangling it. I apologize. <laughs> it's my warped sense of humor. I refuse to learn. That's it. okay. So, but but those positions and going through those positions is only one part of wh wh how what yoga experience is and what it frankly should be. But it's a part that most people tend to focus on too much. Right. So it's in a very important part. And the movements are what allow us to come to a place of understanding about ourselves and and then it allows us to come to a place of stillness and be able to, to have the meditation. But there are other people, like the first piece is about how you are in community and how you treat other people. Well, if we're not putting that first in community, then I don't care how good you look on your Instagram feed. <laughs> like, <laughs> so um, that that's my approach is that there's so much more than how you look in a pose how you do a pose. So this downward facing dog, you notice I haven't corrected you. I never would correct you unless you asked me, right? <laughs> right? I just don't because your downward dog is gonna be completely different than mine. It's gonna be completely different than someone else's. Nobody in a group practice should look like the person who puts themselves in the front of the room because it's a personal practice. And, and those postures or poses are just that one little piece. So when we're talking about being in community, which is the most important thing, does it really matter, you know, if you can be in tree pose or whatever it is? No, what matters is that you're understanding yourself and, and how you what, relate to other people, and then that you can find that stillness. I hope find that, that stillness. Find that stillness. So you said the poses are one part. What are the other parts? So there, there are eight limbs of yoga. I'm not going to go through all eight of them, but it's, it's about how, how you treat others in community, how you treat yourself, breath, mindful movement, and, and stillness and meditation, right? So ultimately, the goal is to move yourself through these yoga philosophies, processes, to get to know yourself, which can be scary. And I will tell you, like in the, I have cried on a yoga mat many times and that's okay. Um, what is it about being in some of these poses that can cause this abrupt, sudden and surprising emotional release? And I say that based on what 
Well, let's face it, I don't have to beat around the bush. What, you know, Matthew has told me about him bawling at the... <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're going to be sorry you said that you were um, interested in yoga and didn't know much because I'll be making sure you know it all now. <laughs> Well, and if we go back into lockdown, you. <laughs> you know? That's right. That's right. Um, I, you could you could be a student. This that's the other cool thing with the and I will get back to the question. But the other great thing is I used to only be able to teach people that could show up at the studio at a certain time. Right. In my neighborhood, and now. Right. It doesn't matter where you are. I can be in your living room, which is great. Right. Um, but the. The, I, what you're doing is moving the breath and and operating with such an awareness just basically what my what I say is just notice notice the breath notice your posture you begin to notice a lot and and feel those emotions going through you that breath going through you when you hold a pose for a period of time that stretch can get really deep and give you a, a release um, there's a lot of research on it and um you know one of the things that one of the areas that i've studied is a trauma-informed yoga approach because a lot of times we have trauma that we kind of store in places in our bodies but we just keep moving and we don't find the stillness to just so alla it, alla you're allowing the breath you're allowing the process so when you slow down Mm -hmm. allow the breath, stop mm -hmm. what you're doing, find your stillness. Sometimes those things that you have shoved to the back of your head come bubbling to the surface. That's exactly what happens. That's exactly what happens. And I would say you asked a question too about what's a little bit different maybe about the way that I approach yoga is that I do move more slowly. There are you can go to a power yoga class at a gym and you can work up a sweat and feel like you got a workout. That's, that's a workout. That's exercise. Um, that's not really what I'm interested in, in sharing. Right. I should be sharing with you the skills and strategies you need, sharing different ways for you to become successful at what it is you want to do so that you don't need me. It's the same thing in yoga. And so yoga is not, if, if I just showed you how to work up a sweat, like go, whatever it is, get a workout, where are you taking that? What are you doing with that? So the idea in, in the approach that I have is to, to slow down and to allow yoga to be a part of your life. And I just share, here are some things that I, you know, some breath work I've done, some postures or poses that I've done that have helped. And here are some things that work for other people. Try these things, try it your own way. See what works for you so that you can take the practice and do it on your own. So I'm, I'm again, trying to work myself, not an, another one that's not a great business model, I know, but I'm trying to work myself out of a job. And it's, it's about choice. And to me, maybe choice goes right under community and what's important to me. Hmm. And, and that's what yoga needs to be about. That, and I will say, when I share practice, I will say, here's the, the shape we're gonna be in, the pose that we're gonna be in. Make your choice about the way that feels good and comfortable and safe for you. But you can be still, but you're not stuck. And you can always, change your choice you said to me the other day that you can change your mood by changing your breath it's tell me tell, <laughs> tell tell me just a little bit about that because i gotta tell you the last few days with the pandemic and the delta variant taking off and events starting to get canceled again and etc my mood has been, and you might even to be able to tell I'm a little more subdued than I normally am today, is just because, you know, everybody has all of a sudden is revisiting this sense of really, I, and for me, it's like really, really, especially with people not getting vaccinated when there's a perfectly good vaccine out there. 
Anyway, I don't want to get into that. But, but anyway, what are some quick techniques or how do you go about changing your mood by changing your breath? I find that concept, that's not something I've heard before. So it's all in the noticing. That's all it is. So just stop where you are. Notice if you're grounded, if you're sitting down, your feet flat on the floor. If you're standing up, just feel the feet on the ground. And then just notice your breath. Notice if it's a fast or slow breath. Notice if it's a full breath or a very shallow breath. Notice where it's coming from. Is it coming from down lower? Or are you breathing up here in your chest? And if once you notice, you'll often hear people say, just notice the breath. You don't have to change anything. The beauty of it is that you have the choice to change your breath. It's something you can control. When it feels like everything's out of control, you can just stop and notice your breath. So my question for you is how was it for you in the begin early beginning of the pandemic? And is was that a similar path that you had in terms of all of a sudden feeling like the rugs pulled out from under you, but then thinking, ah, opportunity. Right. So the rug really was pulled out from under me. Like overnight, I wasn't at a studio. I didn't know what, and this day of international yoga was, well, it was, it's called the international day of yoga. And I just changed it to DIY because it was easier to remember, but I thought I can't, I'm made for community. We're all made for community. Um, but I can't just be stuck here. And so it didn't take, it didn't take me long at all. Everything closed in March. By June, I was pulling these people together. And literally, even in March, right when we closed down, I started doing classes on Zoom in March. I thought, I can't be disconnected from community. Like, I can't go out in community, but, but I can't be. And neither can any of these other people. And so it's another piece of service to other people, right? I say I do everything with a sense of love and service, right? And so what can I do that can help other people that's also ultimately going to help me? <laughs> and and so I just started inviting people into, into this space through Zoom. And do you think that this sudden connection to the yoga of the world and yoga people around the world is a direct result of the COVID pandemic. Would you, do you think it would have been as fast, you would have been as fast to discover that if it wasn't for being shut down and isolated because of the pandemic? <laughs> so yoga, yoga practice was already essential for me. The community was essential, but the way, the opportunity that was available, um, because of the pandemic, especially in the yoga community to continue to bring people together, I think it is directly related to the pandemic. Some teachers that, that thought you had to be in the same room with other people in order to practice yoga suddenly didn't have any other option. Right. And so the number of people that I've been able to meet and the relationships that have grown through that time. Now, it would not have happened if we weren't all forced to be still, to be stuck at home. Uh, and, and it's beautiful what has happened. And the, the instructors that I was inviting, that they watched their businesses grow because other students were coming to them that, again, if you're going to teach somebody that's in your neighborhood, they have to be able to come to that studio at that time for that practice. And then suddenly anybody can have the benefit of a particular teacher. You just said something that slipped past me up until a second ago, which oh. is, yeah, which is, and it kind of, you just added one of my little nuggets of truth regarding the pandemic. Um, like I said, Allison was, hold on, it got the hand in my thing. Allison was the first um, person who started me on this line of thought that the pandemic is bad, but it also has some things that are good about it. 
and some opportunities that you might not otherwise have time to explore and people you might not otherwise meet. You just said that the pandemic brought about stillness and stillness allows you to stop and think. And I had not thought about that. Had to slow down, to be still. What a great opportunity that would not have otherwise presented itself if we continued to run continue to do all that we were doing or feel like we had to have all that we had to have, right? Suddenly you stop, you notice, it's the stopping and noticing, right? And you say, oh, this is really nice to be home. This is really nice to have a conversation with someone that I don't have to rush on to the next thing. All of that and to me, all of that is yoga. One of the things I haven't even mentioned to you yet, one of the things that I did from the time the pandemic started, I started doing a walking meditation every day because I could. Because and I the could. difference that yeah. made in everything, and my kids noticed that things slowed down. We went back to family game nights. They're 17 and 19 and asked if we could go back to family game nights. Because they couldn't take any more Tiger King. Because <laughs> they couldn't, yeah, right, right. I mean, they're not gonna, so, but to me, that's yoga. That slowing down, stripping away what isn't really you. Right. Sometimes we, I love choice. I just told you it's like second on my list. Right. But sometimes we have too many choices and then we choose too many things and we're so busy that we're doing stuff that isn't even really what we love to do. And so I think with this time, it forced us to, to take a step back. You can see it differently. Right. You can take a step back and see it differently and say, which relationships are still with me for me, you know, which parts of my job that I was doing are still for me and which things aren't actually what I loved. I was just doing them because it was what I thought I was supposed to do because I was out there. And so I, I think, I hope that everyone takes with them what they learned in this time into life as it gets more busy. If. <laughs> if it gets more busy, it will eventually. And, and, and can we still recognize the benefit? So when I was teaching, kids that struggled were the kids that I wanted to come to me. If they thought school wasn't for them, the way that school operated, they didn't quite get it, they didn't quite fit in. And I'm finding that with yoga, it's the same thing. So. So anyone that says, I don't know about that yoga, anybody that's making fun of yoga, hint, hint, or, um, you know, is saying it's I'm so like, for me. I wasn't making fun of yoga. I was making fun of upside down doggy pose. <laughs> and only because I have a warped sense of humor. It's not the, <laughs> but, um, the, the people who think that yoga is not for them, those are the people that need yoga, right? The people who say it's too slow, they probably need to find some stillness or somebody that's sitting around too much. They might need a little bit of activity that's not about athletics or exercise or some end goal of I'm going to get tight abs or lose weight or whatever it is. There's so much more to yoga and it's for everybody. For those of you who know Matthew and I, you know we're event photographers. Ex particularly experiential photo marketing is what we do. That means we go to two to three cities a week, sometimes, and shoot thousands of people. We spend time in hundreds of restaurants and hotels at airports, and we travel, travel, travel. It does not leave a lot of time to breathe, and certainly not any time for stillness. So Angela. Angela is 
totally right. COVID has enforced a stillness that makes us all reevaluate everything that we're doing. Maybe learn new skills or take up a new hobby or start a podcast. With the uncertainty of COVID hanging over our head like, like the sword of Democles, you just have a sense of stress from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. I am going to listen to Angela. I'm going to take her up on her offer and try a little bit of yoga and see if I can't find that sense of well-being and stillness, which is a little elusive right now. I hope you will try it too. I hope you'll do the same. Next week, we'll have another episode of the Patterson Park Podcast. Not quite sure who we will be featuring, but it will be someone really interesting. Uh, an artist, an entrepreneur, or an activist in the Baltimore area. So have a great couple weeks. Take a breath. We'll see you soon.